Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to go through fitting the gussets to the horizontal stabiliser. There's two ways of doing it. You could chamfer the 16th ply, sand the joints and glue them directly on top of the framework that you've already created. But that shows through the covering and uh, to me it doesn't look particularly professional. The alternative, which is accepted by Fisher, is to inset the gussets onto the joints into the tailplane so it's a flush fit. And when I actually thought about it, the time taken cleaning up the joints and chamfering the edge of the gussets uh, is pretty much the same as it would take for me to do this joint. So join me in the video and see how I do it. Right, so uh, I've only got an old and rather cheap uh, table saw that's seen quite a lot of service. So I've clamped down a piece of wood down here so that my plywood can't slip underneath. Because uh, it's only 16, so it can't slip in underneath there. I've only set the blade a fairly shallow height and the reason for that is if I have it higher, it's going to try and cut and split the thin ply. It's much better for it to be cutting it at a shallower angle. I've set the gap from here to the edge of the blade just over two and a half inches. As the strip is five inches wide, the ply that's supplied for the tail plane, that'll give me one piece that's just over two and a half, which is what I need for the spar and leading edge block area, top and bottom and the remainder of the strip will be just over two and a quarter inches which is what I need for all the other gussets. So I'll uh, trim the sheets and then we'll get on and do the rest of the gusset making. And if you're wondering why I didn't use a push stick, I won't grip it to be able to push it through. So, one piece two and a half, I should think. Check. Yep, two and a half, and one piece just over two and a quarter. So, cutting the gussets, uh, the only thing I do is I mark it up. I use a steel rule. Stanley knife. Take it easy to get the initial scores in so the knife tracks. And of course you've got to be careful that you don't chop your fingers off. I've got the end of the wood there just clamped. And uh, now that I've got a groove. pressure and that should just go like that and that'll just take a light sand and there is one 16th inch gusset ready to go. Okay then so I want to set uh, the height of my router to be able to route down the thickness of the plywood gussets. So I've got a surface plate here um, putting a couple of sheets of paper down. That's to make an allowance for the thickness of glue, always make room for the glue. I'll put down plywood of the thickness which uh, I'm uh, going, to be, uh, going to be routing to accept. I put my routing jig on. This allows me to be able to route uh, straight edges uh, against datum lines on the wood and to keep the whole thing uh, nice and level. I can now put my router on. I can push this down until the router bit just touches the surface plate. I can lock it. I can set the adjustment height bit there. 
Now this is set so that it'll cut the thickness of the plywood and plus the thickness of the paper which should allow us to have enough room for glue. So here's the uh, the setup in position. This will be run across. Rotation of cut of the cutter is this way, so you always want to be driving it in this direction. That way, it'll save things splintering out. So uh, here we go. Done it slightly differently to the plan. The plan shows, if you look there, you can sort of see that uh, it's sort of cut as a square, but uh, because the laminations run at 90 degrees to each other, I wanted to go as a diagonal. We've got more going across the joint. So, a slight deviation. So, this will fit in there just perfectly there we go just the right depth no step we've just route out uh, this down to depth so i'm going to do the side here then i'll do that side using the, the, the guide edges i'll turn this around and then i'll be able to cut the remainder back that way so safety glasses, number one priority. Remove the jig. This is that little sand. Just to get any slight steps out. And hopefully, no, piece should sit in level all the way ready to be glued like that and the excess will come off you'll see that later so we'll go do this to all the rest of the pieces so as you can see here i'm bonding in the gussets i'm using a uh, piece of thin scrap Bexy glass that I had, but uh, I could use a piece of plywood with a plastic sheet between. And I'm just weighing down, it's bridging the gap, so the weight is actually mainly on the framework, less on the uh, plywood gusset. Uh, the idea is it'll, it'll settle itself nice and flat with the stiffness of the plexiglass, and you'll get a small amount of uh, squeeze out running out onto the, uh, the wood either side which will be easily sanded. As you've seen the gussets are cut oversized so there's a section there that's going to have to come off and that I'll do with a uh, edging bit on the router which you'll see later. Well let's have a look and see what we've got then. Let's take off. Okay, off nice and easily. Yeah, we've got sort of a shine. It feels remarkably level. With a little bit of a sand. Let's just have a try. Uh, There, that's all it takes to get rid of the uh, the excess off there. So I'll carry on and crack on through all the rest. But yeah, that all feels reasonably level. I'll sand this lot off and then I will uh, go around with an edge router and show you what uh, what the product looks like then. And then it'll be over to the other side. Here we are. All the gussets on this side have been 
routed, edge routed to get them to conform to the shape of the frame underneath. So they're all ready to go. All the glue has been sanded. You can still see the staining of where it's uh, gone out. But everything is flush there. So it's uh, nice smooth transitions everywhere. Uh, not that difficult really. And uh, so all we're going to do now is do the other side. So here we go. The, uh, the other side, this is the other side, all done. I've uh, done the edging with uh, the router. I'm just uh, just sanding down at the moment with uh, 80 grit. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Then I've got uh, 240 grit on this side. So again, nice smooth bit, and then I'm just going to go. over the rib like that and then just to get rid of uh, the sort of edges and bits to flatten out any, uh, any lumps just the 220 grit around the edge there horizontal stabilizer nearly complete now uh, you've seen I've routed and I've been sanding. I've been sanding using a block, uh, 80 grit on one side, 240 on the other. The importance of using a block I can't overemphasize with this. You want to have nice flat joints and the main wood used in the construction, the spruce, is softer than the ply. So use a block. Talking about ply, Fisher supplies two pieces of five inch wide 16th ply for the tailplane assembly and two six inch wide 16th ply for the fin and rudder. Now with my saw, I can produce four two and a half inch wide or nearly two and a half inch wide strips to do the uh, center section of the rear spar of the horizontal stabilizer <coughs> or the joiner uh, on the elevator. So four pieces needed for that. So I will be raiding the uh, six inch wide ply for the fin and rudder. Uh, I've done the calculations, I've worked it out and I've mapped it out on the plywood so I can still have the pieces for doing the rudder closure and produce all the gussets required. So a bit of planning needed but there is enough plywood there. If you had a bandsaw you could nest uh, these together in which case you might uh, end up with some nice spare plywood at the end. So time to this point uh, with it all sanded, uh, so take, you know, taking into account what we've done. Total time 10.1 hours. The time it took to do the gussets, so the uh, cutting of the gussets, routing the recesses for them, uh, routing and sanding afterwards 3.3 hours. So not a huge amount of time. Uh, in the next video, I will be doing uh, the leading edge, showing you how I round the leading edge, finishing off the uh, tips of the bow to get the horizontal stabilizer to the point where if we had metal hardware, we could then continue. And I will then go on to creating the trailing edge bows for the elevators using a slightly different laminating technique because of the tighter radius. It's one which I've used on boats in the past, which has allowed me to do a tighter radius than you might normally do without soaking the wood. So hopefully that will work. We'll find out in the next video. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.